Coming up, the record storm dropped nearly four feet of snow on Flagstaff last week, and the digging out is still going. Plus, an exhibit commemorating the Grand Canyon. The news starts now. You're watching NAZ Today, Northern Arizona's local news. Good evening and welcome to NAZ Today. I'm Connor Sweetman. And I'm Raina Steffen. Thanks for tuning in. This past week, Flagstaff saw record levels of snow and lots of snow means lots of maintenance. That's right. We visited City Hall to see how the city is cleaning up after the storm. NAZ Today's Joey Wright has the story. On Thursday, Flagstaff received a record level of snow. 39.5 inches in 24 hours. This amount of snow requires not only road crews, but many other departments to work together to keep the city safe and functioning. Many city workers have been working overtime over the past four days. The police department did 275 vehicle assists on Friday alone. So we've been seeing overtime across the board. Um, we've got folks in the fire department that are working. All the public safety folks have been working overtime the water crews, the um, public streets crews have been working in 12 hour shifts. We've pulled in additional operators to ensure that we're getting the snow removed and cleared as quickly and as safely as possible. Our parks crews are out there clearing the FUTS trails. They are clearing parking lots for all of the city recreation facilities. In the past few days, the street crews removed 4.9 million yards of snow. That's equivalent to 1.6 billion tons. While the city is working to clear the snow, residents are also responsible to help out. The city is responsible for things like I mentioned the FUTS trail, but the residents are responsible for their own private property and then businesses are responsible for clearing that snow from their properties. But with many mountains of snow left around town, there's still work to be done. So now you're going to see a lot of our large trucks going in and removing that snow and taking it out to the airport where we dump it to clear up the streets in downtown to clear up those residential areas as well. Joey Wright, NAZ Today. Over the weekend, Coconino County Search and Rescue volunteers worked with local police and fire departments to rescue a diabetic patient during the snowstorm. Rescue teams deployed a snowcat to Young Arizona because the roads were inaccessible for local ambulances. The team traveled 12 miles towards Young during heavy snowfall with visibility down to 10 feet at times. They arrived after 10 p.m., transporting the patient to Colgard Campground in Gila County, where an ambulance took over, taking the patient to a hospital in Payson. The Coquino County Sheriff's Office is warning backcountry mountain travelers to be alert for avalanche hazards on the San Francisco peaks. With the recent snow, conditions could become more dangerous. While the Arizona Snow Bowl patrols for avalanches, there is no avalanche control or routine patrolling in the forest outside of bounds of the ski area. Those traveling into the backcountry should be prepared and carry avalanche rescue equipment. Well, along with the snow, tax season is here. And some people have already filed their 2019 returns, and some might have even received their refunds. But for those who haven't, a warning. With every tax season comes a new bout of scams and fraudsters. IRS Special Agent Brian Watson says email phishing scams and telephone scams are the most common. And the fraud doesn't just pertain to your personal tax statements. If you work in a job that has access to sensitive information, you should be extra cautious this time of year. They target that person who would have access to very valuable information. For instance, they may ask the person in human resources for everybody's form W-2s for a certain year. And then the person will reply and respond very quickly because they want to be a good employee. And they've just provided criminals with the basic building blocks to commit fraud. Remember, the IRS will never call or email you. They will always send a letter in the mail. Arizona Democrat Representative Raul Grijalva wants to make a temporary mining ban at the Grand Canyon permanent. The current ban on new mining permits was put in place by the Obama administration and lasts until 2032. But, but Grijalva wants to extend that date indefinitely. He has support from local Native American tribes, environmental groups, and Flagstaff's Mayor Coral Evans. But there's opposition from the National Mining Association, which claims that the ban will put the domestic supply chain at risk. And speaking of the Grand Canyon, the park is known for its stunning landscape and long history. For many years, it's been a popular tourist attraction in Arizona, and 2019 marks the 100-year anniversary of the Grand Canyon as a national park. The NEU Klein Library has created an exhibit called Splendor and Spectacle, displaying features of the canyon's history. NAZ Today's Chelsea Parker has more in this week's Art Matters. 
The NAU Special Collections and Archives team holds an annual exhibit highlighting Northern Arizona history. And this year they are celebrating the centennial of the Grand Canyon National Park. The Grand Canyon National Park is kind of the, the gemstone of Arizona as far as tourism. So that's <clears throat> very important that I think people see it in that perspective. The story of the canyon's long history is told through hundreds of images lined up on the walls and in display cases. One of the key features of this exhibit is the replica of the first boat to journey across the Colorado rivers. This particular exhibit is very rich in, in the visual imagery that people can come in and see and, and experience and hopefully enjoy. As far as other aspects of it, it's just a rich and complex story. But everything went back to tourism, scientific exploration, and those pioneers at the rim. When first walking through the doors, visitors will see a map of the entire national park to the left. Then, the story begins through pictures, and it's hard to miss the large boat just down the hall. And if nothing else, having a giant boat sitting in the middle of the floor, people will be walking by special collections, and they, ooh? And so they come in and look, too. Uh, and that's part of the fun of making an exhibit is what can you put out there that will draw people in? We have unique collections that are specific to this region that are an eye onto life in Flagstaff and around the Colorado Plateau. They're behind a pair of doors, but those pair of doors will open to anyone who wants to come and see things. This team of archivists hopes that they will see more visitors walk through the doors and appreciate the local history as much as they do. I hope that we'll continue to get people who's, who are specially interested in the canyon, especially as the park begins its, you know, its own celebration and, con well, continues its own celebration. Um, I hope that we'll get more people who kind of find their way here on their way to the park. I would love to see us as a, a stop on the tour, you know, for people coming from Finland or wherever who are headed to the park for the one visit they'll ever make in their lives. Chelsea Parker, NAZ Today. This art exhibit is open to the public Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. It is located on the second floor of the NAU Klein Library and will run until October of this year. Coming up, President Donald Trump is headed to Vietnam for another summit with Kim Jong-un. Also, we'll have some health tips on ultra-processed foods. Stay with us. All right, welcome to the show, everybody. I'm meteorologist Lee Bourne. What a storm, of course. We're going to have to recap uh, that historic snow event. We'll look at some snow totals and some little facts from the storm for us here in Flagstaff. We'll also take a look at the week here. Things quieting down for us across southwest. Warming temperatures and a little bit of rain in the forecast. We're going to talk about that coming up. Cash in the dash at Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac. Every new Chevrolet will have an envelope in the dash with a card inside, letting you know how much cash you'll receive when you purchase your new Chevrolet. One thousand, two thousand, up to sixty-five hundred in extra cash when you purchase your new Chevrolet. Cash in the dash. Hi, I'm Mark Harris, owner of Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac. I guarantee to beat anybody's price, or you'll receive five hundred dollars. Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac. No pressure, no hype. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Is your family in need of more quality time together? Hello! I'm 
Dr. Spruce. Nature is best enjoyed together. So bring the whole family to discover all the bonding and stress-reducing benefits parks and forests have to offer. Visit discovertheforest.org and trade in phone time for family time. Birds, squirrels, chipmunks, grass, worms, bugs, trees, rocks, and other objects in nature cannot talk. If you'd like to have a conversation while visiting nature, you will need to bring humans along. We strongly recommend starting with your family. Welcome back. The 2019 North Korea United States Summit takes place in Hanoi, Vietnam this Wednesday and Thursday. Leader of North Korea Kim Jong-un and President Donald Trump will meet to discuss military and political issues. This will be the second meeting between the two leaders. North Korea's leader departed from Pyongyang last Thursday, and President Trump is optimistic that the summit will result in denuclearization. Tremendous things are happening for our country. I'm now, right after this meeting, I leave for Vietnam, where I meet with Chairman Kim, and we talk about something that, frankly, uh, he never spoke to anybody about, but we're speaking, and we're speaking loud, and I think we can have a very good, a very good summit. I think we'll have a very tremendous summit. We want denuclearization. Trump held a breakfast with U.S. governors today before leaving for the summit in Hanoi. Well, some minimally processed foods uh, retain most of their inherent nutritional and physical properties, it's the more heavily processed foods, also known as ultra-processed, that are the real problem, Raina. Yeah, these foods can lead to health issues and cut your life expectancy. CNN's Kim Hutcherson has more in today's Health Minute. We all know that eating processed foods isn't the healthiest of choices. And according to a new study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, eating a lot of unhealthy, ultra-processed foods may even shorten your lifespan. Researchers found that a 10% increase in your consumption of ultra-processed foods was linked to a 14% higher risk of death. Ultra-processed foods are typically formulated with salt, sugar, oils and fats, dyes or flavors, and other additives. So next time you're cruising the grocery aisles, try to avoid these items. Carbonated and fruit-flavored drinks, ice cream, margarines and spreads, cookies, pastries and cakes, pre-made pies, pasta and pizza dishes, chicken nuggets, burgers, hot dogs. You can still enjoy these foods, but to live a longer, healthier life, keep it in moderation. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. Uh, I'm in there as Katie. I'll call you later. Or, no, I won't. I'll text you because, what am I, your dad? <laughs> Don't stay out too late. Um, yeah, just text me. Thank you. Get home safe. This must be what Antonio Brown feels like when he's dancing in the end zone. Touchdown, Antonio Brown! Huh. This must be how Lucas felt when he finally got Katie's number. Pepsi. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. I know, I heard, I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Hi! You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. Why would you do that? Probably okay isn't okay. Call a cab, a car, or a friend. Good choice. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. 
Tonight's NAZ Today weather is brought to you in part by Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac in Flagstaff. Look, Monday blues hitting hard today after a big long weekend snow party. Great snowfall for the entire region. We started off with a visible satellite of uh, northern Arizona here. You'll see the high cirrus clouds and underneath them all that white. That's not clouds. That's the snow cover across all of northern and central Arizona. Historic storm as we talked about snow falling all the way down to the desert floors and a lot of snow at that. Okay, today's temperature still a little cold out there with the snow cover obviously and particularly out in the little Colorado River Valley where the colder air is trapped under an inversion. You're going to remain chilly. It was only 39 in Winslow today. Pace was 50, Sedona 50, Prescott 46 degrees. It was 42 here in Flagstaff. Very cold early morning at 3 degrees. All right, let's start talking about this latest storm system. Look at all the moisture we have in the bucket since January 1. 8.90 inches, 6.5 inches of that moisture has come down here in February as the fourth wettest February on record dating back to 1898 and everybody across the region looking good with the moisture it was a wet fall. We're going through a pretty good winter here. Flagstaff, we're up to 14.82 inches. This dates back to October 1, our water year, well above average of 9.1 inches. And if we go city by city, everybody, the green is what we have. The orange is what is average. And as you can see, Winslow, Prescott, Payson, Sholo, Window Rock, and you can name any of them. Everybody looking good in the moisture category and we're you know around Arizona that's kind of rare air to be talking like that okay here's some snowfall totals from this storm system Kachina Village four feet of snow Munns Park 43 inches officially Pulliam Airport 40.8 inches and uh, right on down the line impressive snow Prescott 28 inches East Sedona 18 snowball over five feet of snow on the storm system all right here's some factoids on the storm but first of all let's uh, do a quick uh, 15 seconds of a two and a half day snow storm and take a look. That's a nice time lapse from the National Weather Service out there in Belmont. They didn't quite get as much in Belmont as we got in town. Some little factoids on this storm. It is the snowiest day. We talked about this earlier in the show. The single snowiest calendar day on record. February 21st. That was last Thursday when the storm was really cranking. Almost three feet of snow here in Flagstaff. That is a huge record. Sixth largest snowstorm at 40.8 inches. February snow, 71.3 inches here in Flagstaff this February. That's the second snowiest February in 120 years. We're living in some uh, high times around here. All right, seasonal snowfall. We're at 103.7. That's above our whole season average. 103.7. Nice to see that number here. So many years we're struggling to even uh, get near 100 inches. Okay, quick look out into the Pacific. Pretty quiet. We're just going to see some high clouds here through a fairly mild week of weather. Temperature out side right now 37 degrees some of those cirrus clouds kind of on and off throughout the night and right on through the week periodic high cloud cover we'll call it nine degrees our forecast early morning low for us going into tuesday tomorrow morning sun up 7 a.m straight up moving into the 7 a.m hour here with our sunrise okay 49 degrees is uh or actually we're moving back into the uh 6 a.m. hour. Sunrise is getting earlier. I correct myself. 49 degrees. A warmer day out there tomorrow. Uh, we'll see some warming for everybody. Kind of slow to warm up out in the little Colorado River Valley. Winslow 45 tomorrow. Pace of 55 and Sedona. 59 degrees, your high temperature forecast. Okay, here's a look at uh, the week's weather. Temperatures kind of just hanging around 54 us here in Flagstaff with the periodic high clouds. I think as we get into Saturday evening and Sunday, a very mild uh, Pacific storm system looks to bring rain back to the region. It doesn't look like a lot of rain, but it's something worth watching because if we do get a big rain event on top of the snow, it would be another hydrological problem with flooding. But right now it doesn't look to be a big rain deal. I think the one nice part about the flooding is we get all those beautiful waterfalls on the side mm -hmm. of the mountains. We get them going down Sedona, down in the valley we have those as yeah, well. Yeah, Oak Creek, everything's fabulous out there. I mean, I'm excited. I, I was really excited we had all the snow we did, but I'm not, I'm not going to miss it. I'm glad it's gone for now. Yeah, I think many people are uh, liking yeah. a little break here and yeah. hearing quiet weather. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Uh, so, Michaela, a lot of... A lot happened in NAU sports over the weekend. What do you got for us? Yep, well, NAU indoor track and field travel to Montana. I'll have the results for you after the break. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Your son wants to get a cat, I'll really take care of but you're allergic. Do you A, prepare yourself, B, make the best of it, C squared equals 25. Good job! Or C, find a loophole. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. All right, you ready for some baseball trivia? Let's do it. What year produced the most no-hit games in the big leagues? Seven no-hitters in 1990. Wow, that's right. Now a question that's not trivial. How many children will witness bullying this year? Huh. The answer, three out of four. 75 percent? That's wow. right. How many of them will say something? Kids want to help, but don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to NAZ Today. I'm your sports reporter, Michaela Palladino. Baseball season is just around the corner and the Panthers are gearing up for their first game. Coconino finished 9-9 nine nine last year but have big names returning that are going to be key components for this team. Names like Ty Furr, Tyler Walters, and Tyler Tapia who are entering their final seasons as Panthers. They were supposed to play at home against Thunderbird tomorrow but due to a recent storm has been moved to be played at Thunderbird instead. NAU men's indoor track and field travel to Montana this weekend to compete in the Big Sky Championship. The Jacks were looking to make it eight straight, and they did just that. For the eighth time in a row and 21st time in school history, the Lumberjacks are Big Sky champs. Freshman Christopher Grant cemented himself into NAU history, winning two gold medals for the day. To add to being a champion, Blaze Ferreira was awarded the Big Sky Most Valuable Player. Now let's check in with NAU women's basketball. They headed out on a two-game road match this weekend against number one team Idaho in Eastern Washington. The Jacks ended the road trip with two tough losses, putting their conference record at 5-12. With only three games left remaining in the regular season, some crucial wins are going to be needed. But luckily for NAU, they will have a home court advantage for their last three games. They get to have a nice, well-deserved week off and play again Saturday against Montana State. While the women were away, the men had two home games, one which still happened during the huge snowstorm, but maybe that snowstorm was good luck. The Jacks came out on top beating the Vandals 75-54. to This was a huge win for NAU right before they took on number four team Eastern Washington. We all knew this was going to be a tougher of both games, but the Jacks did lead for a little bit in the first half, but after that couldn't stay consistent with their shots. They ultimately fell to the Eagles 86-73. Despite this loss, sophomore Carlos Hines had a career high of 32 points. The men will also get a week off and they will head on the road for their last three games of the year. Last week before the two home games, I caught up with Coach Murphy to ask what his expectations were for the rest of the season. We're just excited to play these games. You know, we have five regular season games left to prepare us for Boise and get us ready for the conference tournament. I think that we like where we're at. Um, we've lost a lot of close games, three literally at the buzzer. Um, so I, I feel like we're, we feel solidly in the middle of the mix in the conference and, you know, excited to play anybody that may come our way. The Phoenix Suns are still struggling and haven't won a game since January 12th. They faced off against the Atlanta Hawks on Saturday night, but it was the same ending just with a different team. They lost 112 to 120 to 112. It was almost like deja vu because when the Suns played the Hawks last, they also scored 112 points. The Suns are currently playing the Miami Heat, and the score at 8:30 was 28 to 38 with the Suns losing. Last night was a big night for longtime Coyotes fans. One of the best players to ever play for the Coyotes jersey was retired. Number 19 Shane Doan's jersey was officially retired last night. Doan played for the Coyotes for his entire career, which was 21 seasons. To top the night off, the Coyotes came out with a huge W, beating the Winnipeg's 4-1. to 
Much needed win after a three game losing streak and the Coyotes next game will be tomorrow versus the Florida Panthers. At least we have one team to root for, the Coyotes. <laughs> the I know, Arizona team struggling. Well, hopefully spring training starts next week. Diamondbacks might be a little and, better. At least we have baseball to look yep, forward to. and we'll be covering it, so we'll have all the information on that. Uh, yeah, how do you think the D-backs are going to be this year? It's, it's too early to tell. With all the trades and all the new players coming in, that's why we need the spring training to see how well we're going to be. I'm excited for spring training. Hopefully make down to Phoenix for a game or two. Yep. Cool. Well, we'll have another quick look at weather when we come back. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just I, there was a I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, smoke key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. see elephants hiding in trees because they're really good at it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans because love has no labels. All right, pretty mild temperatures here with highs right around 50 in Flagstaff. Overnight lows on the moderate side as well due to this cloud cover out here. Turning breezy late week, maybe a little rain late weekend. Well, we liked that time lapse so much, so let's check it out one more time of that crazy snowstorm that we had last week. Crazy how much snow we got in such a short period of time. Well... We appreciate you spending part of your evening with us. We will leave you with this time lapse of that snowstorm. From all of us here at NAZ Today, thank you for watching and good night.